The former president, Goodluck Jonathan, has said many elections in Africa are not credible because the countries, including Nigeria, are yet to embrace electronic voting system. Jonathan, who is also the United Nations Special Envoy on Crisis Management, says it was worrisome that the outcome of elections was not decided by the ballots. According to him, electronic voting is the only way to get credible elections in Nigeria and the rest of Africa. We are now joined once again by public affairs analyst Leonardo Ebuti. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I want to get your quick thoughts on uh, the, uh, what your position is really on the statements by former President Goodluck Jonathan. You see, if you are looking to improve a political process, um, your best bet is to look to politicians. And when Jonathan was talking about um, the pivot towards electronic voting, he definitely knew what he was talking about. I mean, we've had several electronic voting platforms or opportunities happening in Nigeria. Um, more around the social circle. All of them have not had any issues of credibility, whether it's Big Brother Niger, whether it's um, whatever social media and um, platform voting and all of that. It's easily verifiable. Even when you look at global trends in terms of credibility around the East space from a voting point of view, the rate of interference uh, or rigging or whatever you want, what name you want to call it, is so insignificant that it is clear that the e-platforms are the most reliable for two reasons. One is where the process has been interfered with, the digital um, fingerprints are there for everyone to read, for analysts to read to decipher. Um, the second reason is those interferences, like I mentioned, are minimal um, from a historical context. And so um, when a politician that has nothing to lose, <coughs> excuse me, is talking about a process that he has been part of, I think we really need to take a listen to what he's saying. Okay, I'm, I'm going to quickly quote him now. Um, and in his words, he says, taking a critical examination at the way elections are conducted across the continent, at least from the ones I've, I've observed, I've seen that the only way that we can get there is through electronic voting. And that's uh, the words of former President Goodluck Jonathan. So the question is, what is really stopping us from attaining uh, this? And well, when you look at our... our um electionary process, we took one step towards that. That one step is um, the, um, what's it called, the, the, the accreditation process where we get to use the PVCs for accreditation. But then that one step, excuse me, is neutralized by the fact that um, accreditation is one thing and then voting is the other. So if you look at, if you've been at the grassroots before and you've actually participated in the process, there are manual provisions for when the card reader isn't exactly reading. And so you sort of cancel out the gains of the card reader as an electronic verification process by allowing a manual process to override it where that is not possible. And so um, from our point of view, we are saying, um, we have BVNs that the banks don't give you an alternative if you don't have a BVN maintained against your account. Uh, we have the passport, the e-passport process where the customs or immigration, they don't give you an alternative if your details aren't appearing when you are traveling in or out. And so we're saying we have this pool of data from which an e-recognition system can be easily developed, very easily developed. An e-tracking system can be very easily developed. In America, the e-balloting system or absentee voting or mail-in ballots has been there for many, many years. And the error margin in terms of a rigging point of view is 
so, 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 so minimal from a historical context that even now that a certain president is there trying to discredit the system, there is no historical data available to support that. Yeah. And so we're saying for a country like Nigeria, and that's what Bula Jonathan is saying, is that if we are able to pivot our electioneering process towards that, then we are able to better aggregate the voice of the people. And I agree with him 100%. When yeah. the Americans what said I, what that I'm asking, technology isn't... Mr. Ibute, can you hold on? What I'm asking is, why do you think we, we still have not been able to achieve any of that? And I'm also going to throw in a question with regards to the electoral bill, electoral reform bill that, you know, is still yet to be, um, to be signed. Um, could that also have made a difference? Yeah, why, why we haven't? That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, we haven't done a lot of things in Nigeria because it is not in the interest of the political elite. It, it's a um, free, fair, and credible election is in the interest of the Nigerian people, but it's not in the interest of the political elite. It's not in the interest of the people that are incumbents in power because they are the real beneficiaries of a process that they can manipulate to their advantage. Yeah. Um, why we haven't gone here, it's not because there is no evidence that this is the best way to go. It is simply because a section of society has refused, and the ordinary Nigerian people um, have not mobilized to put sufficient pressure on that section of society to push them to act. It's simple. All right. And, um, and, and, when, it, when the political elites are put in a position where they know that the Nigerian people will not accept an election that is rigged, we no more accept an election that is not credible then they will be forced to do what they already know is the antidote to a non-credible election, All like right. Good Lord Jonathan is pointing out. And uh, one of the things you mentioned, this is going to be a last question uh, before we go. One of the things you mentioned earlier was a smart card uh, reader. Do you think that uh, that has in any way proven effective enough in dealing with electoral fraud in, in Nigeria? For INEC... Um, regulated, INEC regulated elections to an extent, to a good extent, yes, because now you are not going to have voters that aren't registered um, being part of the electioneering process. But when you look at the guidelines at the polling unit, it says that where a card reader is presented and the card reader isn't reading for some reasons, whether it's tech reasons, whether the guy's fingerprint is not working, and so on and so forth. There are manual forms allowing such a person to um, vote, even if the card reader is not working. But you know, that would have achieved two things. Number one, number one is that the person would have had a card reader, which meant that the person is duly registered to vote and has evidence that he's registered to vote, even if it's not working. Number two is that such a card reader, details of such card reader would have been entered into the system, therefore preventing the person from doing multiple voting, at least on the same polling unit. So I would say it, 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 it has moved the process, the needle in the right direction. But does this stop multiple voting entirely? The answer is no, because I've, I've, I've been in the grassroots. It is possible for one individual to have multiple card readers and to vote at multiple elect, at multiple polling units right. if he has the wherewithal to go around those polling units on election day. Thank so you very much. Move the needle. It is not the kill. Luna Nebute, thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, looking forward to talking to you again. Thanks for having me. Thank you.